What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. You have been warned. Content is explicit. Welcome. You are listening to Be Witch Bander. We're two best friends. One skeptical looking at my hot best friend over there, Amy. <laughs> and my hype girl, Krista, who is a believer. <laughs> sure am. Um, by the way, I'm the best hype girl ever. Amy knows this. So if you need a, if you need a hater, I got you. We talk about everything godly and sounds like religious-y today. So we do talk about the spiritual stuff, the paranormal stuff, all that bullshit. And I obviously am a little cynical when it comes to all that shit. She calls it magical thinking. But we do talk about the paranormal things and spiritual things, cults sometimes. Okay, so today we are covering what believing in God does to your brain. Like, not just on a mental overview, but like it actually it physically changes your brain. Isn't no that cool? So, is my brain different than yours? It may be, yeah. I'm spiritual. Because we use like different parts fucking of cool. our brain. And like, should we get brain scanned? I think with we what should. money? <laughs> uh, hello, yeah, our new so, production budget of. Start no <laughs> Two basic Beckys need to know if their brains are different. And it's like verdict, they're basic. <laughs> <laughs> Flashing. Thick, no, but it's basic. bullshit. I feel like a little bit, I've been continuing my Bill Nye, the science guy vibes over here. Bill I'm not going to break nine. down the brain for you guys, but it's in your head. If you didn't know. <laughs> oh, you really? That's how deep I got into the brain. But oh I God. think it's interesting because we obviously know that religion has been like a core part of life ever since like human existence. And it's like the first time in our lives we can right. actually even just study how it physically impacts people. Like where these studies are able to happen. And it's estimated at least 18,000 gods, goddesses whatever you can think of have been praised or not praised. What do you say? Praised or like praised to or worshipped? That's yeah, the worship. <laughs> so they've been eight, over 18,000 yeah. have been worshipped throughout the time. And that's that we know of. Right. I mean, who knows? People, people could be like worshipping our toilet. You know what I mean? Like there's so many weirdos yeah. out there. <laughs> I don't mean because of like puking. That, that's what I meant with that. But like. I mean, you can work on anything. Like, you can make this religion really, right. at the end of the day, can be anything, which is fascinating sure and scary in a weird way, in my perspective. Well, I, okay, the side of me that spiritual loves and appreciates that because mm-hmm. I obviously do have my own patchwork spiritual mm-hmm. practices and beliefs. But the skeptic that you helped make me become more and more every day, when when you become a quote religion in America, you get tax write offs. I was laughing to myself. I was like, too bad we didn't have the money to do your brain scan before Bewitch Banter, BB, not BC, and then after Bewitch Banter and see if your brain like different. B, <laughs> BB quadrupled. B4 Bewitch Banter. Yep, total of that. Well, you know, we could start now with our new budget. Wink. <laughs> and there is, it's really, they're starting to think that spirit, spirituality actually might be a thing we have in our DNA for evolutionary purposes. There must be, if it's part of Whoa. human nature and it, it must be an evolutionary reason we cling on to these beliefs to help us survive. And then another argument is that now because atheism and agnostic individuals are on the rise or are adopting those religions witchcraft which we have coming up soon ish um about resurgence of witchcraft and how that's a lot of the pe- lot of people are turning mm-hmm. to that again and just as a reminder it's about nature honestly at its core so it's your ancestors and nature they were saying that the brain might be changing away from that evolutionary cause because we don't need that survival instinct so much and that might wow. be why Less people are becoming. I think of it as, as we know, it part, you like you said beautifully, a part of our DNA. It's fabric. I think because I think we are p- all part of the same fabric. Mm-hmm. We are one organism. And I just think it's crazy it. to me they were actually able to tell the difference between non-believers and believers. Their brains are actually wired differently, and they use different parts of the brain. 
So yeah, I thought cool. it was really cool. And then uh, I thought this was a great, I found a lot of my information from the Washington Post. They interviewed two neuroscientists, Andrew Newberg and Mark Waldman. Oh, you're going to say Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg is a Wahlberg neuro- neuroscientist. <laughs> I can't even get the word out. <laughs> but anyway, they so this is what they like. The conclusion from their study was the following quote. If you contemplate God long enough, neural functioning begins to change. New dendrites are formed. New synaptic connections are made. And the brain becomes more sensitive to subtle reams of experience. Perceptions alter beliefs begin to change. And if God has meaning for you, then God becomes neurologically real. Freaking mouthful. <laughs> Did you follow that though? That's so cool. Like, so the more you believe, the more your brain chemically depends on almost like a dependency. That's so cool. So basically my brain's more advanced than you. Uh, <laughs> actually, it might be the opposite. No, because but I'm getting the synapses. People who are non-believers tend to think critically, tend to use their critical thinking skills more. And you True, and but what non-religious about- people tend to see it things more in an empathetic moral lens huh? non-religious people or religious sorry religious people, sorry. Religious and spiritual mean? people tend to have seen things more in empathetic light well that tracks with the both of us that tracks hard <laughs> yes but i guess we'll get into it because it's interesting but i thought it was was also interesting that a lot of these, and maybe they just don't have proof, but they were saying that a lot of these changes that were made in the brain from being a believer, I'm just going to say believer because it's a mouthful, but it's like a believer can be spiritual, religious, right? They said people who are religious or believed in a deity are not impacted by organizational churches though, or they can't make the association yet if you're like part of a church. It's more through engaging in spiritual practices that they could tell a difference in the brain. Included more or less as examples of spiritual practices? Yeah. So it would be praying, like chanting. Meditation. Meditation. And yeah, to me, that's my prayer. We we talk about this all the time. Meditation is my minute to connect with Most High or whomever is out there, Mm -hmm. whatever is out there. Um, The universe as many like to call it. That's that's my, I'm getting used to I'm thinking about it. I have, obviously I'm the believer. We know this, a bewitch banter. And I just, we are one being, all of us. That's, that. you can see my brain working physiologically right now. I have goosebumps thinking about it. Sorry, I'm not laughing at what you're saying, but it, like the camera, we're, oh, by the way, we are video podcasting now. If you want to watch us on YouTube, be total dumbasses. <laughs> and please don't judge our first few videos. It's, uh, Hard to know how to angle the camera, lighting. But yeah, so it would count all of those spiritual practices. So things like chanting, meditation. I don't know what else you can really do. Getting high from God. I don't know. I feel like people do that, right? Yeah, Rasta, Tharians. Literally get stoned and believe it brings them closer to God most high. And um, I forgot what they believe God's name is. But, but human, not humans. <laughs> I love that she's so high right now. This is great. (laughs) Like I said, I'm fresh out. I'm fresh out of weed. Oh, damn it. You're not even on the same wavelength as me. I'm on another. I'm chugging this wine. That's pretty good. It's called Firefly. I know. I was like, I like wine. That sounds good. Oh, so one of the studies says that believers, obviously, who engage in like meditation, I think most people know this, and prayer, it can really reduce stress. We know that. So there are a lot of great benefits to engaging in spiritual practices. But one of the things that they said when they engage in those behaviors a lot, analytical thinking does decline, which I thought was interesting. Oh, interesting. So I don't maybe think as critically as you. Is that what you're saying? Maybe just neurologically? Yeah, I think you like you tend you may like they're saying in the study that people tend to lean more towards emotion and and can enhance neural functioning of the brain, its physical and mental health by being spiritual. It can strengthen neurological circuits, which impacts like the feelings of like peacefulness, social awareness, and compassion. Okay. So a lot of great things, right? Problems when they have this type of thinking as a believer, it can be bad because people cling to their moral compass instead of using their analytical thinking. And so that's why a lot of people get outcasted or they have these weird beliefs that are like, there's so much evidence that contradicts what 
people, what they believe, but they hold on to this belief because they believe they look at through things of like, I have to be moral rather than Mm -hmm. someone who might not be a believer may cling to more of the, oh, that's the evidence and analytical and not their emotions so much when they're presented with something that contradicts their beliefs. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's wild. It makes so much sense. And I mean, that's why you have so much extremism on cults and religions, which we argue can be cults. I'm thinking of really uh, right wing conservative Christian. Okay, you, you you don't believe in abortion, but you believe in capital well, punishment. And also, Rectify that. Yeah, up. and it to me, it makes me think of the really very religious people that follow Trump. They were presented with all this evidence. How many accounts does he have against him now? I've lost count. It's like 90. You're so stupid. But it's so anyway, many indictments. Like, all and- his evidence is like thrown in their face and they still, through their moral compass, they think he's the right person. So they're going to lean to their morals rather than all the evidence they- they're being presented. So obviously, <laughs> of course, I'm biased. And all these studies are biased because that's what I was like trying to think about. I was like, it's very interesting mm-hmm. to think about who are doing these studies. I can't imagine many people who are scientists. I know a lot of them aren't religious, but some are. And whereas if you're not religious, I wonder if you're more neutral in that sense. Or Well, yeah, just sorry, back to abortion and then just women's autonomy of our own bodies. What's more important than being able to be the beings that bring life into this world? Nothing. We have that power. That's just so mm-hmm. incredible and literally awesome of the word awesome is what that means it's literally awe inducing and yet there's doctors oh i'm getting anger bumps um of whom my sister has come across that you know subtly slide their religious beliefs into their Mm -hmm. practice and um it's just so disgusting take that shit out of government take that shit out of your medical practice you don't get to use your moral compass to tell a woman what to do with her body that's sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but that no go that's ahead. the thing that's thing that is so ironic about republicans is that they're small government they don't want government in their rights but when it comes to other people's rights or a group that's different than them they want them all up in their business it drives me crazy i haven't been this angry at a long time on bewitch banter okay we gotta move on they also said that empathy can be great but also it can be so extreme in this moral compass is like think about what's going on in israel and palestine today and they're doing all this horrible stuff in the name of religion and it's like their empathy and morals are so out of like tune with what we're doing with the world that they think they're being right no side is innocent in that situation i'm not even trying to start debate but this goes right to your point that they're so convinced in their moral beliefs that they're literally killing innocent citizens on both sides. I don't even know and how. To me, I feel like it's such a deep, deep. It's hard to even comment. And then I feel like you say one thing, it's like you're afraid of being canceled. <laughs> that's wrong. Oh, no, for sure. Well, well, so that's why I'm going to blanket say both sides are fucked. Yeah, I right agree. And not, but I'm just saying that it is interesting how these good qualities could also become extreme and cause people to do terrible things. So it's like and stream streamists in every group. I thought this was really interesting. So also when they're spiritual or having those spiritual practices, it can give them give them neurological uh, effect as love, which makes sense. Holy right? shit! I love that. I just oh my god, that makes sense. Oh, that reminds me how lonely I've been lately. What do you know? <laughs> No, but I think I thought you might like some of this stuff because I think some of it are cool. No, I do. This is amazing. And I, I I think that as such a empath and like spiritual person, I have been missing love so much lately. Human uh, thing. I think most people want a partner. I mean, some people love their independence, but I think most people in the day, majority of people probably want their partner. Yeah, I, I listen. I have learned to love my independence but being lonely is a little different you know and the doll experience is just kind of lonely in general god damn let's end no, it right there i know i was just saying i mean it in a bad way i just thinking I but more people i think a lot of people are lonely and they don't talk about it 
Absolutely. Because I feel like sometimes the adult experience can be more lonely because you're not like in school or in the, all those groups. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You're not constantly surrounded by peers or, like or so others. Much everyone gets lonely. That's what I was trying to say. Everyone gets lonely. Damn, this is, this is Scott sad. I want to talk about the beauty of being spiritually connected. I Continue. thought this was funny that they <laughs> decided to do experimental like research and they of course chose Mormons because Mormons are like a group who's so well known for like centering their whole community around religion. And they were like, go study these nut bags. That's what I felt like mm-hmm. or nut cases. I feel like that's probably the conversation they had, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I watch Intervention all the time. And one of the episodes I just watched this week was about a Mormon family who both the mom and the daughter were Mm. codependently addicted to, I think, meth, if I'm not mistaken. And the mom was, again, back to your exactly your point, her extremist beliefs were jading how she's fucking up her life using drugs and also then thereby enabling her daughter and whoa yeah it is crazy crazy. like i was like (laughs) i just think it's fine that's the group they picked but and they studied them so basically they like watched them while they got their like god high oh praise jesus can you imagine getting high to god like naturally if I'm with Rastafarians, can? sure can. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If I, again, caveat: if I'm oh. with Rastafari, yes, I, I can. don't know if I can. <laughs> in that case, yes, I can. Out of the way. Don't you think being on shrooms is spiritual in a way? I don't know. You're. I'm asking the expert, the shroom <laughs> expert of the. But I don't know if it's spiritual so much. I feel like it's your brain is fun to me. That's. I don't know, mate. I'm still gonna do it eventually, but. I'm a little scared. I did mm-hmm. chant to myself I was a badass when I did it. <laughs> See, that's a mantra, which you might say is a religion, telling yourself you're a badass, bitch. No, I think it's just because at one point I was like, I wasn't sure about how I was feeling. So I just had to be like, you're a badass, bitch. It's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. You can handle mm-hmm. anything. <laughs> Basically, I'm saying to give myself a little pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> that was my pep talk. You're a badass, bitch. <laughs> It did work, actually, though. I kept telling myself that, and I was like, okay, everything will be okay. Okay, back to the story. Please, yeah, but they uh, watched them while they were getting high. I thought you were going to vibe out about how that's weird for some reason. Oh, I don't at all agree with, like, when the, they talk in tongues and the body convulsions and all. Yeah, that mm-hmm. stuff scares me. That's, that's some performative bullshit you know obviously yeah. but, but to your point like they've been so brainwashed into thinking that that their brain works that way it literally mm-hmm. behaves that way mm-hmm. that's true it is weird but they hooked up mri machines and they observed them while they were like relaxing if they were watching a video about church reading the bible reading quotes from religious re- leaders and then in comparison, they had them take drugs, right? And so in the cool. study, they had them that like, study. Every time they had felt a real rush of euphoria or felt God's presence, they would push this button. And cool. they, what drug did they give them? Opioids? Mushrooms? DMT? No. Because DMT is supposed to be like the quote unquote God chemical compound. Supposedly. Or actually, sorry, I don't think they gave them drugs, actually. Sorry, I made that sound a lot cooler than it was. I know. Like, fuck, that's a really cool study. And Mormon participated <laughs> in that. I'm like, holy shit, is it the mom that I just talked about from fucking intervention? No, but that bitch was like, no. In Jesus' name, amen. No, in Jesus' actually, name, I, I want think drugs. what they did was they compared the brain of someone who was on drugs compared to the Mormons who were experiencing these feelings. And it, it looks similar. It, and it caused the same impact. That's what I was trying to say. Not it. Sorry, we went down a rabbit hole there. I was like, that's a really cool fucking study. I don't know who would sanction it, but cool. But they would have them press this button every time they got a high from God. Uh, and the problem is, like, it's all perspective. Were they doing that a, a bunch to prove right. they're religious? Or their faith is so strong? Yeah. But the... Uh, the nucleus acumen is the key structure in the brain that creates that 
processes all motivational or emo- emotional thoughts in the limbic motor system, which in which processes caffeine, alcohol, LSD, drugs, and everything. Substances of any sort. So that is what gets triggered. But actually, decision-making gets activated as well. Oh, that's scary. So we're crazy, right? It's scary. Again, I'm just as Thanksgiving approaches next week, you think about the puritanical crazy ass leaders when that's activated, they're not going to stop and they will literally burn and hang and stone innocent people to death because they believe that that's what they need to do. That's just scary. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. You can't be godly and say, and and proclaim to stone someone in God's name. That's not, that's not fucking godly. No, get the fuck out of that. Oh, there go my F bomb. Okay. And then another question, this all um, kind of causes, is religion part of her DNA? Because if it, the brain is different, because obviously we credit the brain for making, doing all the reasoning of living, right? Mm-hmm. Are we hardwired to believe in God? Are certain individuals? Whoa. They argue that God's biological substrate, which is the base of an organism, predisposes us to believe in God. That's like part of us or part of some individuals. And this part of the brain is responsible for all emotion. It scans specifically the hypothalamus, the amygdala, and hippocampus. No, this also controls hunger. And so when we're stoned to shit and deciding to eat our munchies, that's what it's it's like, dude, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> I need my hypothalamus turned off. Imagine if we could do that. That'd be so cool. I'd be like, dude, I don't I think I would ever turn mine on. Except at a buffet. It'd be natural as I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get chow down tonight. <laughs> there was a repeating pattern of MRI changes to brain scans to individuals who practice meditation for this reason, they argue that thinking about God changes the way the brain works. But there must be some natural biological reasons to why people believe in God in the first place. The Roman Catholic Franciscan Order. Yeah, those are those are the monks or the priests my mom went to college with. Remember, I was like, Barb studied under these very intellectual men. When priests are like that, I love them. But when they abuse their power... That's where I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm all about the knowledge, the literacy, the showing people, the reading, the teaching. But like when you think that makes you God, then we have a fucking problem. Priests out there. So I guess the question they're at looking at is this uh, guy from, who's a smart guy, the doctor. <laughs> smart guy, the doctor. He, I'm a doctor. I'm smart. I'll take your word for it. Okay, bro. But... Uh, <laughs> His argument is that spirituality impacts the brain. The other argument is that there are things in our brain that you're predisposed to through through genetics that would make you religious. Nature versus nurture. How do you separate right. those two? Because I feel like if you have parents who are religious or tend to be spiritual, a lot of that you're more likely to be religious or spiritual. So I don't know how you separate the two. But yeah, I, it's fascinating. But his is that he thinks it impacts the brain because all these dendrites are forming. But then people are thinking that, well, it might already be in our DNA. So I think it's kind of an interesting question. And they were saying that uh, I thought this was very fascinating, too. So non-believers and believers absolutely have different types of brains. And they're questioning, is the human brain like evolving away, away from religion? And the lack of belief in God is due to higher order brain networks, which I could barely tell you about what that means, but something in our higher order brain networks. So, okay, if I'm going to try, I'm going to try, if you will. So obviously, brains work like computer, right? Like neural pathways and circuits. Mm-hmm. They run on different hierarchies of connectivity. And so, Maybe, I'm assuming as the non-doctor or scientist or psychologist, (laughs) that border is a a different level of executive functioning or a different level of like spiritual functioning. I don't know. You know, that's the debate. Like what's the survival mode, executive functioning? Holy shit, there's a bear. I fucking run or hide. Or, you know, is it, oh my God, 
there's a bear that's on our You're- spirit. So religious believers are more likely to use intuition. Oh, what I say, what I say, and this what I say, says, what I say, what I say. Conclusion, mm. they are dumb as fuck. Expound, please, on your thesis. Liz survey says you dumb. Well, you <laughs> no, it doesn't say it. I don't know what you mean by that, so I made that up. <laughs> verdict says you dummy no uh so you're more likely to use your intuition and use mental shortcuts sometimes when it allows to make individuals make decisions i don't know why i'm saying you like you as an you as an individual i meant spiritual religious to be fair i am the believer of the two of us so a lot of this it's good because it helps me understand my thought process i want to understand what i do why i no, do but what i do just what they- doesn't mean it applies to you. It's not like religious people, you can't blanket one group of people. Well, no shit. I'm, shit. I'm obviously nothing like the said Mormons we were just talking about. I thought you were totally in the same group when I thought about the two. But yeah, I guess sometimes they can take mental shortcuts because they're more leaning on empathy, all the things we've discussed. So they just have a different lens sometimes. So that's why they sometimes skip the thinking through things where non-believers are more likely to use analytical and to live reasoning, which involves higher cortisol areas for making decisions. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is all biased. I know I'm smart as fuck. Thanks. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is people who are less extreme with their religious beliefs. So think about, I was like really bored last night. I couldn't find anything to watch. So I started watching the Jewish matchmaking show. It's cute. So it's yeah. cute. Anyway, I was watching it and I don't know the Jewish faith that well. Um, I didn't know how like many different many sects there are, and also how their beliefs, how different you could be. Like, and it's just like Christianity. Like, you could be staunch in like your kosher, or the kosher home, non orthodox, and then oh. like, all the extremes, just like Catholics. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I was raised quote Catholic. Do you think I'm? But the people who aren't so staunch in their beliefs tend to exhibit higher critical thinking skills. There can be a very amongst even the, like the people how religious you are which i think makes complete fucking sense in my as i close my ipad and shut it that's a wrap folks. that was fascinating okay i don't know how well i am or how good of a job i did as bill nye the science guy i I rate pretty high on that spectrum okay because i did my last episode was very scientific too am i getting too scientific here no, I think what does science say versus what are things we can't explain? And as we know, that's what I'm very much drawn to. But is it because my brain is chemically wired to that? It's making a dendrite. <laughs> oh, right. Because <laughs> she's defending her spiritualism, so it makes a dendrite. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. No, it's, uh, that's a thing. I am always... Oh, always open and willing to listen to anyone's belief as long as they're not harming anyone um which unfortunately the extremists as we know in any religion or organized cult anything harms people um but i i find fascinating i don't know i wish i could be a psychologist that ship has sailed obviously yeah (laughs) oh that'd be hard though i don't know how you study things without having a biased lens because if I did that study, I'd be so biased. You know, as a journalist, we're supposed to not be biased either. Of course we are. We're fucking human yeah. beings. There's yeah. no such thing as completely fair and unbiased news. You can't. You can't do it. Fascinating because we're always going to take our own experiences with us. But there's definitely there's definitely pieces that I'm unwilling to let go of, i.e. we're all connected. We're one, we're one big-ass organism somehow fucking somehow on this planet together and it's just crazy and then that's my belief but you made me think of that horrible mendipede didn't watch it don't wanna i don't either <laughs> but i think i'm gonna wrap it on that note for right. today's episode tell me what you think was that too scientific or are you guys enjoying this shit be smart be witches peace be witches Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram or bewitchbanter.com. Suggestions for the show? Emails at bewitchbanter at gmail.com. Credits? Music Phantom Fun by Jonathan Boyle from premiumbeat.com. Podcasts? Edited and produced by Kristen Hins and Amy Holt. 
As always, if you enjoyed, please rate, review, and subscribe. 